All right, guys, well, welcome back to another episode of the League Express podcast. My name is Jake Keenan, and joining me as always is the editor of League Express, Martin Sadler. And Martin, first episode of 2024. Happy New Year. Uh, how was your break? Absolutely great, uh, Jake. Um, very much a family-orientated uh, Christmas and New Year. Um, playing with the kids two or three times, or the grandkids now. Mm. Not so much the kids, the grandkids, and I've got six of them. So, you know, it's always great to see them, and um, we always have a wonderful time. But it's nice to be back in the saddle. Mm. Um, and I'm getting to that age, mate, where it's nice to know that I've survived another year. <laughs> so that that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. And um, you probably remember the last podcast we did two weeks ago, I had a very bad cough, and... Uh, I, you know, I developed a bit of a sort of flu-like symptoms, really. But fortunately, I think I'm over it. Yeah, and okay. uh, that's even better news to celebrate as far as I'm concerned. And that's it. We are talking about it just before the episode. There's a lot of sickness getting around at the moment. There is, It always yeah. comes at the worst time when you have well, things Well, you're lucky if you've avoided it, mate. So, <laughs> you know, well done to you. Oh, no, that's right. I got a little bit crook um, on our holiday in Germany. And, yeah, I was lucky to sort of knock it on its head before Christmas time. Yeah. But, um, yeah, what can you do? And it was a, it's been an interesting sort of period period it's sort of the time when rugby league news kind of winds down a little bit but um yeah unfortunately we did have some sad news over the christmas break we uh lost a, a few good uh men in the rugby league community obviously Absolutely. Um, carl webb tragically passed he uh was diagnosed with mnd um, shortly so after he, um rob burrow was diagnosed that's yeah right. but but very sadly of him didn't didn't survive as obviously, obviously as long as rob has and, and let's hope rob continues to um, you know, survive for a, an awful lot longer. But, mm. yeah, and he was a real great player, wasn't he? A great mm. great forward, a very aggressive Queenslander oh, yeah. who played a great role in some of the great Queensland wins Absolutely. in State of Origin. And, um, you know, you look up the the term tough toughness in the dictionary oh, gosh, and there's yes. a picture of Carl Webb there you know he's just he had that uh, mongrel that you wanted in a State of Origin series and I say that um, with the utmost respect he just brought yeah. that aggression always took the fight to the opposition he made it personal between you know him and opposing front rowers and uh, yeah really wore his heart on his sleeve yeah 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 such a tragedy to die at such a young age mm. and we also had the uh, tragic passing of uh, young Troy Dargan who uh, was over in Cook Islands I believe having a bit of a holiday and um, yeah tragically a got motorcycle himself in a motorcycle accident cycle. Accident. Yeah, very sad indeed. And mm. um, fortunately, I mean, obviously, it's it's tragic when that happens. But there was a, a you know fundraising effort online, wasn't there, to bring him back to Australia? And mm. I'm very glad to say that that target was reached very quickly, and um, his family c- closed down that account, and, and were very very thankful mm. to all the rugby league fans who and, and other people who had donated mm. to that fund. And it's really great to see that that can happen, isn't it? When mm something so tragic and unexpected occurs. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's just one of those things. He was 26 years old on the books at Canberra Raiders, hope, hoping to make a big impact. And um, sadly, that will never happen. Mm, absolutely right. And, you know, it's it's a, a tragedy that's come at the worst time because um, you know, they were sort of tipping him as potentially someone that could have taken over yes. and uh, um, partnered Jamal Fogarty in the halves. There was an opening there and, um, yeah, just a... A real tragedy at Christmas time. You never Absolutely. want to hear this sort of news. So, um, our respects and condolences go out to uh, both the Webb and, and Darwin yeah. family. And I've just heard uh, this morning that uh, Matthew Kadimi, the ex French international player, has passed away quite suddenly, uh, again at a, a very young age, just uh, 59 years old. And, um, you know, he was he played a great role in the Catalan Dragons when they were first set up. He, you know, was, was, was there. Um, involved in coaching and so on. And, um, you know, it's it's always so sad when people die probably earlier than you would th- expect them to, I think. And mm. my condolences to Matthew's family in France. Mm. No, absolutely. Um, now, we did have some other news uh, over the Christmas period, um, probably a Christmas present, you might say, for our St. Helens fans out there. Absolutely, uh, yes. Jack Wellsby's officially re-signed. We touched on it in the last episode, but it's official now. He'll stay there until 2027, I believe. Well, he will stay there, but then again, he might not. But what what, what that con- what that means is that if any Australian club does want to sign him, they would have to pay a pretty significant transfer fee to break that contract. Because as we understand it, there isn't a a get-out clause allowing um, Jack to uh, go to an NRL club if if one makes him an offer. So that means they would have to pay a transfer fee, and it would be a hefty one. And and I've no doubt that Jack um, is on a marquee player contract, 
uh, clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's no doubt a very good one because, you know, he's given up that right to go to the NRL uh, without a fee, you know, until 2027, which is, you know, another four seasons. So, you know, he will be being very well paid for that um, for that privilege. And uh, good luck to him. He's been a tremendous player mm. since bursting through a few years ago. And some of the comments uh, made by the club, they were saying it was important to retain him, not only for St. Helens, but Super League. You know, it's, we've got to, it's great to be able to retain such absolutely. a talent like Jack Wellsby. Well, Super Super League, you, you know, that, that's absolutely true. But but Super League has got to learn to market talent more effectively than it than it does. Jack Wellsby is a great player, a great young man, a great guy in many different respects. But we've got to learn to, you know, promote players like him to generate more interest from people who might not be. Um, rugby league fans at the moment or who might just be marginal rugby league fans we've got to get more people going to St Helens to see him play going to watch England when he plays for England and so on Um, so it's not just you know it's not just a case of paying him more to stay and to keep him out of the clutches of NRL clubs but we've got to get rugby league in this country back to a more level playing field compared to the NRL Mm. and that's what um, we don't seem to really have any clear strategy to achieve so far this as, as far as i can see anyway and uh, that's the, the the biggest disappointment for me about rugby league in england is that we've got a great sport but we don't know how to sell it and to market it mm. and until we do i think we're always going to be in danger <clears throat> of losing players like jack and, and and you know many others uh when they come to prominence to to the nrl because it's more glamorous it pays more generally and um you know we've seen you know this 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 year players going over there um young will price and kai pierce paul for example going to newcastle morgan smith is going to canberra Mm. um i mean i've no i don't begrudge those players the the right to go to australia and i'm pretty sure that if i were a young player in my early 20s i'd be wanting to go myself Mm. but uh, for the good of our game over here i think we need to you know, learn a lot more about about marketing our game. We might want to come back to to this because it, it, it links to what IMG have done with Rugby League. And, you know, I've written in my column this, this, this week in, in League Express that uh, I can't see what IMG have brought to the game in terms of marketing. There's just, you know, they, they, they have taught clubs to use their um, digital um, output more effectively perhaps but really that's just appealing to their existing fan base they've not done anything as far as i can see that will um draw in a a larger fan base to rugby league i hope i'm wrong and i hope that by the end of 2024 we will see um more people being attracted to our sport but I'm not sure that if they are, it, IMG will have much to do with it. Mm, absolutely, and especially given with uh, you know how young uh, Wellsby is, like he's he could potentially have another you know ten to oh, fifteen years, yes. um, you know playing rugby league. He could break all kinds of records if he if he wanted to, and I think he's already reached um, well over a hundred Super absolutely, League games yes. at such a young age. Yeah. So yeah, he'll be around for many many years to come, and um, you know if if they were smart about it, he could be the face of Super League for the next ten years. Not just him. There are several of the players who also could be um there are lots of you know quite attractive young guys playing our sport over here um who are probably more eloquent than they used to, than the average rugby league player used to be a few years ago but but they need to get the chance they need to be uh, have the spotlight put on them and mm. we need to work out ways of of achieving that aim for, for example you know we, we've had a major commission in the last 12 or 18 months looking at safety in rugby league which is perfectly fine and 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 so on but we need something similar looking at the marketing of rugby league you know that's where the rfl falls down it's where rl commercial falls down what on earth are they doing um you know to 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 achieve that aim i'm I'm just not sure mm, that's right and i will say one thing about wellsby back in australia a lot of fans they know who he is because they see the way he plays when he plays against And the Tonga. World Cup Challenge, of course. That's right. Yeah. And, um, you know, I remember when he scored that uh, magical try in the grand final a few years back to seal the deal. Um, you know, that was going viral in Australia for how that grand final ended. And, yes. Um, yeah, so, I mean, 
his name's out there, but God, they can they could do a lot more to you know really make him a face in the game. Absolutely, and as you said, yes. there's many other players that could join that list. Yeah. Um, now, speaking of uh, investigations, uh, the former head. Uh, former head of match officials Steve Ganson has uh, left by mutual consent uh, following a year-long investigation into that department. Uh, what was your reaction to this news, Martin? Well, it was probably the least surprising news that we've seen over the holiday periods. Steve, I, I don't know what went wrong with Steve at the, uh, you know, the match officials department because the RFL had been very cagey about saying anything officially about this, and um, you know, but Steve has been suspended from that job. Uh, for, for about 12 months, as far as I'm aware. Um, so it's been, you know, th- there have been other people performing that role in, in an acting capacity. And I think they're now going to search for somebody to take it on, take it on, on a full-time basis, which I'm sure they need. Mm. Um, but, it, you know, it, for, for, some, for some reason, it seems that relationships broke down in the referees department and... Um, it's very sad that that, that, that did happen, and uh, you know we've got to move on from it. I think, um, Jake. Mm, that's right, and uh, you know especially with uh, all the scrutiny that officials do go through um, year in year out. So fingers crossed, we can have a, a positive uh, yeah. year for our officials in 2024. Yeah. Um, now the IRL has recently released their uh, new rankings, and it's seen England. Uh, Reclaim uh, the third spot, or will enter the back into the top three, absolutely, uh, which is well deserved following the Tongan series. I'm not sure that uh, Australia deserve to be number one, though, Jake. What do you think <laughs> after losing thirty nil to New Zealand? Uh, that... You could make an argument that they should be number two. That's for yes. Sure. Well, yeah, you'd have thought so, wouldn't you? After mm. after not winning the Pacific Cup, but uh, so I'm not quite sure how the weighting goes on 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 you know that. Uh, that ranking, but you know, England, as we expected, go back to number three. I think it's pretty predictable, to be honest. And uh, obviously, we we move above Tonga and Samoa. Um, and the question remains: Will Samoa come to England this coming autumn? That's mm. that's the question that we've not yet had an answer to. And um, we wait to see, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. And. Uh, you know, a, a series like that would be extremely beneficial for, for both nations. It I'd would. In England, uh, some strong competition with how Samar have gone uh, over the past few years and a good opportunity for them to get some revenge uh, mm. following the World Cup. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed we see Samoa coming across. Well, I hope so, um, because it would be such a letdown, wouldn't it, if they don't come, uh, particularly after we had a, a series against Tonga and... Uh, I mean, obviously, there's a, a rivalry between us and Samoa after they beat us in the World Cup final, in World Cup semi-final, mm. and it would be great to, you know, give give them the chance to show that that wasn't a fluke, and us the chance to show that, uh, you know, we can we can beat them. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'd, I'd, they've got some great players in the Samoan squad, and yeah, I'd, I'd I'd love to see them over here. Mm, absolutely. Now, uh, in our last uh, last episode, we touched on uh, the proposed uh, or the real changes that will be uh, instated from uh, 2025, I believe, in Super League. Um, they're going to be lowering the tackle height to below the armpits, I believe. We said yes, below yeah, the we shoulder. said that. Yeah. Um, so, in response to that, there's been a online petition started by a amateur coach by the name of James Dudley. Now. Uh, James' argument is that we shouldn't be, um, we should be, I guess, implementing uh, tackling techniques and teaching juniors how to tackle from a younger age um, because when you introduce them to that contact early, there is an argument that they learn how to tackle safely, they learn the proper technique. And, um, yeah, putting that off by a few years could have a detrimental impact. I think that's really an important point to make, and I agree with him entirely. Um, I think, you know, the the sooner young kids can learn how to tackle, five, six, seven years of age, the better. Because when they're that small, um, it seems to me that they can't do each other much damage. You know, they're too, too small to really hurt each other badly. And... And on the other hand, it's very important to learn how to learn good tackling technique while you don't run the risk of being badly injured if you if you get it wrong. The thing is, if you only start learning to tackle when you're a teenager, um, you've often got guys six foot and bigger running at you and um, it becomes much more dangerous if you've not already established a a good technique. Mm. So I think that's misguided uh, on, on the part of 
the Rugby Football League, and I wish it had been debated much more than it it probably has. And um, I, I don't, you know, this we, we, we need to be very careful because you know th- there is a, an argument if you take health and safety to the extreme, then you wouldn't play rugby league at all, would you? Because you know you could say, well, you know, rugby league does give rise to injuries. Um, because of of of, of the um, collision nature of the game, um, so let's play a game. Let's play a sport that doesn't give that. Does, doesn't you know contain that element? Mm. And you know we'd all end up playing touch and pass or or maybe soccer or whatever. You know we we, we we've got to be realistic about our sport. Our sport can be quite dangerous, but it's particularly so if people have have, have not developed the techniques to play it effectively, you know, as they get into their teens and so on. Mm. So, you know, I, 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 I do support that, um, that, that petition and, um, I, you know, hope, hopefully it makes an impact. Mm. No, absolutely. And that's the thing, like, you know, growing up, I've played football with boys who didn't start playing until uh, their teenage years. And that's always the thing that they have trouble with is just learning that Bound tackling technique. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, having the courage to be able to, you know, go for a low tackle when oh, there's yes. knees and hips coming at your yeah, head, yeah. Um, you know, getting your head in the right position. And, um, you know, the way that the game has gone over the years and the, um, I guess, the importance of the wrestle and winning the ruck, yeah, yeah. Um, it's quite a, uh, an art to it. And um, the sooner kids can start learning how to do that safely, oh, uh, the, better. the better. Yeah. And I will just say um, that, online petition has reached 5,000 signatures uh, so far. So I think that's been running for a bit over a week or so. So a lot of people in support of that. Um, and yeah, we might try and get in touch with James at some point just to get a bit more information. Well, it'd be him. interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, especially with uh, his experience as an amateur coach. He seems mm. to have worked with juniors a lot. So, But that leads me to uh, the next point. You read a pretty interesting article this morning, Martin, um, in the Sydney Morning Herald. Roy Masters, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Roy Masters was um, was was quoting a a, quite a well-known, wealthy um, business guy, um, presumably one based in Australia, who's um, decided to come out with the opinion that in fifty years' time he thinks that there will only be one major code of football, and that will be soccer or association football. Um, because the other codes will have faded away because of the danger associated with them, and he he seems to think that um, that the, uh, you know American football will have been overtaken by soccer in the United States, which is a bit hard to imagine, mm. um, and that rugby league and rugby union and even AFL in Australia will then all be you know second to association football in Australia, and. Um, and there are plenty of people who who say things like that, aren't there? You know, they they seem to think that that, that soccer is a safer sport, and uh, you know, therefore, is much more likely to survive in the long term. Which, which conceivably, I mean, every, every eventuality might happen, but I'm not sure uh, that that this will happen in in the case of certainly not in the case of Australia and the United States. I can't see. Um, American football, you know, their, their average crowd this last year has been sixty nine thousand. I can't see that. I can't see soccer overtaking that mm. um, because virtually nobody watches soccer on TV in the United States, um, and certainly not many people watch soccer on TV in Australia, do they? And and New Zealand. So uh, you know, I I find that a bit hard to fathom. But I also think it's about time. It's about time we went on the attack in relation to uh, football as well, you know, and, and made the point that, to be blunt about it, our sport, um, although you might not think so from looking at crowds, crowd figures in England, where the major football clubs get over 60 or even 70,000 spectators, mm. but nonetheless, I would still contend that rugby league is a far more exciting game to watch mm. and that tries are more exciting things than goals in football um, because, you know, you can... The, the beauty of our sport is that you can often see a try unfolding from quite a long way out mm. and you can appreciate the beauty of its creation. Mm. Whereas in football, you often see, you know, if you, you blink and you miss it. You know, you, a, a player hits the ball on the edge of the penalty area and if you weren't watching, you miss the fact that it goes into the goal. It, it, it's not, I mean, it's sometimes built up in the same way as in rugby, but not that often. Mm. And, you know, in, 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 in football, the... The goal is often, you know, very much a 
split second thing mm. like that and um and obviously the crowds love them there's 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 there's, there's, n- there's no question about it but but I, I i just don't see football i i i often try to sit through a football match um on tv and i've been to you know a few as well of course in recent years but i never find it remotely as exciting as rugby league and um you know i i, I wish that the people who run our game were a bit more explicit in saying the same thing. Mm, absolutely. And you almost wish sometimes that fans of other sports would just sit down for 10 minutes and give rugby league a try just to yeah. see what the product's like and how well, exciting Well, the thing is we're them. in a much more tribal world now because if, if, if you're a football fan, there's football on TV virtually 24 hours a day now, isn't there, in one form or another. <clears throat> so it's much less likely. In, in the old days, when, um, say, in the 1960s and 70s, um, there were only a couple of TV channels in this country and probably in Australia too, I would imagine. So, you know, you and, and rugby league used to be on the BBC on a Saturday afternoon, the second half of games. So you'd, you'd always find that people watched, you know, the grandstand as it was, the programme on BBC, and would pick up, you know, something about rugby league at that in, in, in those days. But um, but now every sport is a niche sport, isn't it? You know, you you find rugby league is a niche sport on Sky, Every other sport, you know, for example, I, you, you'd never get me to an ice hockey game because I never get the chance to see ice hockey because I spend most of my time watching our sport. So, you know, and, and similarly, ice hockey fans, and there, is, there are a fairly significant number of them, probably would never transfer over to rugby league either. Mm. You know, it, everything's much more... Um, much more tribal now compared to what it used to be. That's it. And as you touched on, it's that you know, every game is at your fingertips these days. Absolutely. So you're, you're losing time to be able to invest in other sports, I guess, when there's uh, yeah. all these football matches uh, there ready to watch. You can stream it on your phone. And not just you that. Go. You can see games that you remember from years gone by. You know, I mean, you can watch. The, I mean, I obviously as a Wakefield Trinity fan, as a young lad, I can watch... The last time they won the Challenge Cup was it was in 1963, mm. and you can find that game on YouTube, mm. you know, and it's great to watch, but mm. uh, very different game to what it is now, of course. Mm. But you know, you've you've got so much, you don't need to strain to other sports, is what I'm saying, to yeah. to get your sports fix. And um, you know, at one time for me, it was rugby league in winter, cricket in summer. Yeah. But but now, you know, I'm much less interested in cricket than I used to be as a kid. Mm. Um, and it's it's all rugby league for me, which is not surprising as I have a rugby league newspaper. But, you know, for, for, for other people, it's much the same as well, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, what I will say is I miss, um, well, I don't miss, but I wish there was more uh, pages on social media or whether it be the Super League uh, accounts posting more and more highlights from older games yes that would be great um you know sometimes you'll get uh like you said an old match will pop up on Mm. youtube but uh every time i'm scrolling through my feed and i see like a highlight from 1995 or you know a kangaroos to a highlight Mm. or something like that and you watch it and you go because you know that was sort of before just before my time but you watch it and it's like you're watching it for the first time and it's yes exactly wow this is amazing like seeing mel meninga you know run wild like absolutely amazing um, yeah just i'd love to see more throwback clips so if there's anyone Anyone out there that wants to start a throwback page, uh, yeah, they I'm ought all to. for it. I'm all yeah, for it. Yeah, that's great. Um, but now with uh, the new year, we also had some um, honours. So Rob Burrow and Kevin Sinfield, they've been awarded CBEs in the New, new Year's honour list. Uh, and there was another award to... OBE to Ralph Rimmer, the yeah. ex-chief exec of the RFL. So much deserved. <coughs> yeah, well, I'm, well, obviously, Kevin and... Um, <coughs> Excuse me, Kevin and, and Rob clearly are very much deserved, and many people think they should have got a knighthood. And in fact, there is a another petition we've been talking about petitions. Yeah. There is another petition to give them knighthoods as opposed to um, CBEs. And there was an interesting article in the Times the other day, written by my, uh, I think it's, I think it's called Mike Walsh, saying that you know rugby league always comes out on on the wrong side here mm. compared to rugby union. They get knighthoods, we get. CBEs for for Kevin doing something so incredibly remarkable, mm. um, and I've got a lot of sympathy with that view. But nonetheless, you know, I, th- I think Kevin and Rob themselves would say, well, it doesn't matter what the award is; what matters is how much money they've raised for their mm. stated aim. And you know, they're, they're, they're in excess of a million now. And you know, in League Express this week, I urged our readers to add their contributions to um, to that figure and uh, 
and hopefully they will and it's great to it's great to see no absolutely and uh, as you said much deserved um now over the uh christmas sort of period there on boxing day we had a couple of trial matches uh, a few off-season matches um the, the leeds rhinos they sort of uh debuted a bit of a new look there were some new players in their lineup obviously were. lachlan miller got to uh debut at fullback but yeah um, so they were trailing 22 to 6 uh, at half time against half-time Wakefield against yeah. Wakefield and uh, came back to win the match 41 newly to 22. coached by Daryl Powell of course Wakefield yeah absolutely so probably a great first half stint for Wakefield and then yeah. the opposite, opposite sort of uh, result in the second half there but so 63 points scored and 57 of them were scored at one end mm-hmm. yeah that's wild. so you'd be disappointed if you'd done the other end yes exactly <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and then yeah the other match up there was at uh, Bradford Cattle- v Halifax oh yeah and Keith Levy Oldham and Dewsbury versus Buckley, the local heavy woolen derby. And that's an interesting uh, quiz question there you were saying. Well, 12-12 at 12-12, yes. That, that, the, it was a game that kicked off at 12 minutes past 12, and the final score was 12-12. Yeah. Now that has to be in a future quiz, hasn't it? Yep. What game kicked off at 12-12 and ended at 12-12? Yeah, that, no one's going to remember that one unless that's they read. The, that's the quiz question to end all quiz questions. Yeah, absolutely. I think on rugby league. <laughs> um, and Gareth Widdop, he's uh, signed with the Halifax Panthers. Yes, that's interesting news, isn't it? I thought. I mean, he, he, he gave the impression that he'd retired, and um, of course, he's a Halifax kid, mm. and once won last season, no doubt, with his you know the the, the place of his birth, and that's. I, I'm really delighted mm. that he's doing that because it, it it's a boost for Halifax and. Hopefully he'll uh, have a good season with them. I'd wish Gareth all the very best in in that um, you know in how he performs for his new club, and uh, hopefully it's a it'll be a great climax to his very great career. Oh, absolutely, and just thinking about the the experience and the wealth of knowledge he'll bring to oh, uh, that side, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm sure he'll have a, a great impact on the the halves there. He didn't play for Halifax at um, Bradford though on. Christmas Eve, I don't think, did he? But um, and and Bradford beat Halifax twenty four sixteen in very poor weather at, uh, at at Oddsall, which is not an unusual thing to say. Yep, and in, in the middle of winter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now Hull KR, we've got a Hull KR preview in uh, this week's edition of League Express, looking at yes. uh, I guess their season outlook. Um, what are you expecting from this side this year, Martin? Well. They finished fourth, didn't they, in 2023, and they got to the Challenge Cup final. So if they're going to improve on that, which obviously is their ambition, they've got to finish in the top three, um, and they would have to win the Challenge Cup, wouldn't they? So, uh, you know, who's to say that it's beyond them? Um, They've got some interesting uh, signings. You know, they've signed Niall Evels from Castleford, who I think is a grateful back, but they're talking about playing him on the wing. They've signed Oliver Gildart from Lee, who had that spell for the um, um, Dolphins in, 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 in the NRL. Peter Hicku from North Queensland. Tyrone May joining them from Catalan Dragons. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kelepi Tanginoa from Wakefield. Um, it's, you know, and, J- and Jai Whitbread also coming from Wakefield. Um, th- there's some good signings. I'm, I'm not sure, having said that, whether they are... Um, trophy winning signings mm-hmm. you know that's that's the key isn't it but um you know uh, obviously willie peters did a great job in in 2023 and um shown he's shown himself to be a very capable coach and who's to say that they won't kick on from where they left off last year but they'll face plenty of challenges because plenty of other teams are wanting to you know, improve as well. You know, Warrington leads. Mm. Obviously, Lee will be there or thereabouts again. And um, so it's going to be quite interesting. One player we've picked out, by the way, as the player to watch for Hull KR is Ryan Hall because at the moment he has 240 Super League tries, which is just seven behind the all-time leading Super League try scorer, which is Danny Maguire. Um, So... Ryan just needs seven more tries to equal Danny's record and eight more to uh, exceed it. And, uh, you know, hopefully he'll stay clear of injury. And it won't it be great if and when he actually achieves that mm. uh, that record. And that's right. And he had a, uh, a great end to the season when he came back. Um, so, I mean, he had that injury sort of right uh, as the playoffs were approaching. But um, he finished the year strong and... 
yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he did uh, break that record. And touch wood, he can stay healthy. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of teams that are improving. Um, do you, do you have any 2024 predictions that you'd like to make uh, with the uh, the new year? Well, the only prediction we can make with any certainty is that London Broncos would only have one season in the Super <laughs> League. And that's that's appalling, really, isn't it, that it we is. can say that at this stage with this grading system. Um, but who's going to improve? Um, who's going to... And who's under pressure? Well, obviously... I think quite a few coaches are under pressure this this year. Rowan Smith at Leeds, they finished eighth in 2023, and that's not good enough for a club with Leeds traditions and history. Mm. So I think Rowan uh, needs to get Leeds at least into the top six, at least into playoff contention. Mm. Um, and ninth was um, Huddersfield Giants. Um, Ian Watson, they had a disappointing year. It was a funny year for Huddersfield because they got a lot of very tight defeats early in the season in 2023, and that seemed to uh, knock the stuffing out of them, really. So they they need a good start to the season as much as anything else. Mm. So that's going to be very interesting to see how they go. And then, of course, Hull FC finished 10th, um, and uh, Tony Smith, you know, he's now signing players... Uh, who are his players, I suppose you might say. Um, so they will be looking to improve. And, um, you know, my son-in-law is a very keen Hull FC fan, so I'm hoping on his behalf that, that they do get better. And what a great way to start the season, Hull FC v Hull KR, mm. on the opening night of the season. That's a real biggie. And, you know, I would hope that they'll sell out the uh, MKM Stadium for that game. And and I hope it's a much closer game than last year's equivalent game was because Hull KR travelled to Hull and won 40 points to nil, and that was a disaster for Hull. Yep. And, we, you know, we don't want to see that happening happening again, mm. really, do we? And then in 11th place was Castleford, and they've got a new coach this year, and that is um, ob- obviously Craig Lingard, mm. who's featured in the January edition of Rugby League World magazine, and there's a real great interview with him yeah. in there. And I'd recommend it to anybody. Stephen Ibbotson spoke to Craig and, and, and has done a wonderful job in, in bringing out some of the <coughs> issues that Craig sees there. And, and I think of all the coaches in Super League, he is one of the most intelligent and smartest. Yeah. Mm, that doesn't mean to say, though, that they will necessarily get back to where they were in, say, 2017 when they finished 10 points ahead of everybody else in the table. Mm. But, you know, he's, he's, he's a smart guy. He's got Danny Maguire as his assistant. Um, and I think, you know, we could see Castleford being a bit better than perhaps some people anticipate at this stage. Yeah, well, and a, a full pre-season uh, under him. It'll be great yes. to see what they can do. Absolutely. Um, and, yeah, I, I guess they're probably... What, what grading did they get? So they're probably not in much but, danger 12 from point odd, yeah. That, that, losing... that, well, they could do. I mean, they 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 will need to um, show some improvement. But they've got a, a a new, very wealthy new backer who's put some money into the club, That's who right. who will certainly improve their grade score on finances. So I mm. think they'll probably uh, qualify in the end. Whether they'll get an A grade, I rather doubt because of the quality of the stadium. But um, mm. you know, and but who knows? It's going to be uh, uh, again. It would be. Ridiculous not to see them in Super League, really, to, yeah. be, to be perfectly honest. This is the thing that worries me about what's going to happen next year. You know, I think there are quite a lot of... If, if you look at the 12 clubs in Super League at the moment, it would be quite easy to say, well, you could easily have an, a 14-team Super League because Wakefield are going to come bouncing back, mm. I'm fairly sure. And then there's Toulouse, of course. So let's have 14 clubs in Super League, whatever the damn grading is, yep. and um, you, you can then do away with these ridiculous loop fixtures. Mm, no, absolutely right. One team I'm really excited to watch next year, or this year, I should keep saying uh, next year, but um, the Leeds Rhinos, obviously they've made a, a heap of big signings. Uh, yeah, and as you mentioned, uh, Rowan Smith there, he's on the hot seat a little bit. They need to win and win now. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, obviously, they, they played on Boxing Day, but um, yeah, Brodie Croft... And Paul Momorowski didn't play in that match, so that's two no. key signings that will feature absolutely um, as the season approaches. And yeah, obviously, Lachlan Miller at the back there. It's going to be interesting to see how well that spine can gel. And the other thing is that Harry Newman uh, is coming into the last year of his contract, mm. and um, he's obviously, I think, got his eyes set on 
the NRL as well. So, you know, he played for England against Tonga and scored a, a, a marvellous try in that series. Um, I, I think, you know, Leeds will struggle to hold on to Harry um, this year, but hopefully he will have an injury-free season because he's had these hamstring problems that have dogged him during his career. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, best wishes to him to avoid all that um, mm. in 2024 and have a massive year. And if he p- plays well for Leeds, he's a real great prospect in my oh, view still. Absolutely. And those hamstring injuries, they can linger for, you know, oh, quite gosh, a while we're yes. seeing. Like Tom Draboyevich, they've sort of derailed his career a little bit. Absolutely. He's spent a lot of time on the sidelines. So, yeah. fingers crossed he can um, yeah get it all sorted and, and have a healthy year as well. Uh, if you had to predict... Uh, your man of steel for 2024 who do you think is the front Gosh, runner that's that's an interesting one yeah <laughs> i i would probably i would probably say um harry smith of wigan might be a very strong contender mm. george williams obviously of um of warrington um it's normally a half back um sometimes a hooker uh obviously jack wellsby is another very serious contender um so I, I'd say those three probably are the three favourites. Yeah, interesting. Um, could Lachlan Lamb uh, work his way into those discussions? Oh, if, of course he could. Yeah, Even yeah. Matt Moylan, I guess. You know, we don't know what he's going to... Well, know. Matt Moylan's a player I've admired for a long time, but for some strange reason um, is not quite fitted in at Cronulla under Craig Fitzgibbon. Um, and I... <coughs> excuse me. I suspect he'll fit in a lot better at lee under adrian lamb so mm. i think it's a very exciting player personally yeah, absolutely and uh yeah with him alongside our lock land there won't be too much pressure on him to no. really take control of the team so, no no it looks um, a real good combination to me no absolutely um now before we uh sign off today martin is there any other news you'd like to touch on um well just to um give a mention it, it's only now about seven weeks away isn't it the world club challenge when penrith come to wigan mm. um i was reading that wigan have sold about seventeen thousand tickets already and it's heading for a, a pretty certain sellout and i think quite a lot of penrith fans are, fans are coming um to that game which will be great to see um and then of course a week after that we have the um debut of rugby league in las vegas with a mm. double header there so that's going to be Really interesting to see how that goes. So there's a lot to look forward to in 2024. But the main piece of news that I want to see um, is a confirmation that the Samoa Tour is on this Mm. October. That's what I hope we will have confirmed before too very long. And, um, you know, let's let's hope the RFL can sort that out because we don't... Now that we've had England playing a test series against Tonga, it would be fabulous to see them doing the same thing against Samoa. So that's my biggest hope in the short term for Rugby League. No, absolutely. And uh, I can't wait for the season to kick off. Um, it's going to come up quick. Uh, yeah, it I is. I can't wait. Well, actually, the the um, Challenge Cup um, gets underway in just 10 days' time or so, doesn't it? In um, If we can find the details of the, of the opening games, let's just have a look because... <coughs> Where are we? Um, gosh, I I can't find. Ah, uh, no. Let's. I think we've got it here somewhere um, on our amateur pages. Yes, we've the first round. First round is played on January the thirteenth and fourteenth, which is coming up very quickly. Oh yeah. And the big game, I suppose, in in many respects, which is going to be featured on the RFL's um, website, is the game between the um, Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy, which will be played at the RAF Cranwell in Lincolnshire. Yeah, well. So that will be a game worth seeing, I think. And uh, if you fancy a trip down to uh, Lincolnshire, Jake, I'm sure you'd enjoy it that, yeah, well. that day. How far away would that be from? Not massive. Not a massive distance from um, from where we are now. Probably about eighty miles or so, I would okay. think. But I'm, you know, I'm not. Don't quote me on that. But I'm not. <laughs> I'm not an expert on the geography of uh, distance between English places. But, you know, it wouldn't be too far. And uh, 
It'd be very, very interesting to see, I think. Oh, definitely. No, it's, uh, I, that's come up a lot sooner than I expected. I thought we yeah, had yeah. a bit more of a wait on. So, no, no, no. Yeah, very excited to no. um, get some football back in front of our eyes. And um, for next week's episode, I guess we'll, we'll put in some calls and try and figure out if there's any news on the, the uh, Samoan tour. Yes, exactly, yes. That happens. Um, Great. But yeah, we'll end it by saying Happy New Year to all of our uh, listeners and viewers. And um, stick with us. We, uh, we'll, we love joining you and... Uh, Hopefully, we'll have one or two guests as well coming up fairly oh, soon. Absolutely. Yeah. And I will say, um, you know, it's been great that we've been able to do a few of these through this uh, quiet period, you might yes. say. So, always something happening, though. So, thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget, if you do want to get yourself a subscription to either a League Express or Rugby League World magazine, head to www.totalrl.com forward slash shop. Um, you can get all the other subscriptions there. So, head to that website. And, yeah, we might um, sign off here and do it all again next week, Martin. That'll be great. Perfect. Great to see you, Jake, and Happy New Year to you as well, personally. Cheers, Martin. You too, mate. Thanks a lot. Cheers.